Ladies and gentlemen, um, we might as well get the show underway. Um, welcome to the September uh, CPD at JCU. Um, this evening uh, gives me pleasure to welcome our guest speaker, who is a Professor of Oral Pathology and Oral Biology at JCU. Um, he's going to speak to us tonight on the prevention and early detection of oral cancer in North Queensland. Um, please join me in welcome Professor Jing Gao. Thank you, Bob. Good evening, everyone. Tonight we're talking about oral cancer. It's not a new project. It's not a new thing we are going to do. It's an old one. It's a traditional. But why is oral cancer urgently needed in North Queensland? So that's challengeable based on prevalence in North Queensland. Is a high or low? Who can answer it? From audience? From myself? It's a fair answer. It's unclear. Unclear means based on the official data, based on the real data. We don't know yet exactly is a high prevalence or low prevalence. Based on the incident rate, is a high or low? However, based on the available data, which means all the data and uh, estimated data, right? Say the latest data was back to year 2008. That's based on Australia Institute of Health Welfare, where it's collected the data from the cancer reg registration. That means patient already at the middle or late stage who have been hospitalized, right? So let's have a look at the older data, right? Back to uh, 1982 to year 2007, right? The incident rate increasing, right? And I believe up, up to now, still climbing up, no matter the advanced technology or the uh, lifestyle or economy change, economy increase, right? And the people get uh, sufficient food, sufficient nutrition, right? But other factors, it, because the cancer has a multiple step development with uh, multiple risk factors. And we do know exactly the etiology, right? So based on the population of uh, 400,000 on the base, you can see, or 500,000 population, the cancer rate around 25,000, so almost, uh, you know, 5% um, increasing, 5% incident rate is quite a high, right? And uh, particularly for oral cancer, right, or mouth or head neck related. So you can see from tongue, uh, from deep tongue, and this because of quite a high incident rate, right? Uh, if I accumulated the total number, right, over something like 3,000, or closer to 3,000, right, in that sense, if compared with uh, 
the other common body size is still quite high. And uh, hospitalization. I adopted this data from Australian Institute of Health and Welfare, right, based on cancer registration, based on cancer in Australia, you know, overall data, right? So you can see hospitalized, for example, same day, right, this over around the 2,000 patient. Overnight, it actually here doesn't say one overnight or five, right? But uh, the uh, average length of a stay for cancer-related hospitalization, you can see, right, average, right? For example, in lip cancer, over five days, right? Why I use this? Because this is related to expenditure, the health budget. It doesn't matter with the public or private or families, right? And also it's related to patient and families' sufferings, right? So this uh, version, right? What's the appearance, right? If a cancer already, the patient with a cancer already look like this, we won't miss out, right? We already know this uh, cancer, right? This uh, the Geneva cancer, right? If you couldn't correctly diagnose clinically, you won't be qualified as a dentist, right? And uh, it doesn't matter with uh, races or na nationalities, right? This, uh, uh, photos from Chinese uh, patient with uh, the tongue-based cancer and uh, flu of mouth, the leaf, and the gingiva. This photo supplied by Dr. Wei from Tianjin Medical University Cancer Hospital. Right? It doesn't matter with uh, aged people or children. Right? The incidence of oral cancer increasingly in any age. Right? I believe my student can differentiate, correct the term of this uh, malignant lesion. It's a cancer or sarcoma. So let's uh, talk about a major etiology. If we know exactly causes and uh, carcinogenesis, that would be great because we can cure the cancer. This is a difficult area. So we have to classify into major categories. One, non-human papilloma virus or Epstein-Barr virus. It's not uh, related, so here I put a negative mark, right? Uh, in terms of uh, cancer, maybe coming from the gene mutation, right? Aged people, right? Or any other group of people, right? Uh, lifestyle related, for example, smoke or alcohol. Alcohol means uh, overconsume or abuse, right? That's one category. Second category, that's uh, almost 25% of oral cancer patients right, found probably related to human papilloma viruses, right? Or Epstein-Barr virus, right? Oral cancer here means in the head neck, not to specifically to leave a tongue or buccal mucosa or uh, the palate or flu of mouth or whatever, right? Little broad area. Particularly, the subtypes of uh, HPV, 16 and uh, 18, that's uh, mostly identified, confirmed, right? Any other additional subsite? I'm not... Uh, 
the pure scientists in this area, so I'm not involved yet. But uh, later on, we will get uh, more information, and we can talk about it. But uh, I believe some additional subtype or subset would be available, right? Would be existed. Otherwise, the cancer why cannot treat it well? Particularly for HPV 16 and 18, right? All those patients share with uh, cervical cancer in women because uh, currently vaccine been developed and uh, tried to use clinically to prevent oral cancer as well, right? Uh, or vice versa. In terms of uh, oral cancer patient in female patient, right? Simultaneously go to cervical cancer. I located uh, um, the literatures. Unfortunately, I haven't found yet, right? So if uh, one, <clears throat> for example, female patient go to two different sides of uh, mucosa epithelial cancer in cervical and uh, oral mucosa, right? So that uh, <coughs> could be confirmed HPV 16 or 18, right? So that uh, definitely cause the cancer because uh, the virus is not only localized the mucosa, that's uh, through the blood system, right? So circulated in the whole system. So that's uh, my think about, right? <coughs> okay. We don't know exactly etiology. And then we think about uh, risk of factors, right? <coughs> Based on biomedical factors, genetic, and uh, hormone-related in females, for example, breast cancer in male, prostate cancer, right? Or related to environmental factors, right? Sunlight for melanoma or skin, right? The squamous cell carcinoma or radiation or the occupational exposure, for example, a number of years ago, ABC TV uh, staff, three ladies got uh, breast cancer at a similar period of time, and also reported from my previous colleagues in China in a dental hospital, one dental technician, that's all three, uh, female, female, sorry, female uh, colleagues, right, go to breast cancer. One dental technician all, all the time working in the dental lab. And the one dental nurse and the one prosthetics in the same period of time got cancer and died within three months time, right? And the pollution, the air pollution, Right, particularly in Asian countries. Right, then the major focus for most uh, studies on lifestyle, particularly smoke and uh, alcohol. Right, and uh, physical inactivity, obesity, and uh, chronic infections, for example. Hepatitis B, and then later on developing into a cirrhosis, and uh, most uh, cases transform into liver cancer, right? Or poor diet, right? All these are uh, the lifestyle related. Okay. The other lifestyle related in far north in particularly Asian Pacific regions, areca or betel nuts, 
chewing or smoke, particularly smoke and uh, chewing put together, right? How about in our region, far north, the cannabis chewing or smoke? Any report has been given related to oral cancer? Answer is no, we don't know yet. But the people, particularly the health workers, presumed probably related. We don't need to estimate. We need to, to collect real data by ourselves. Why? I tell you later on. And then we look at it early stage and the later stage. From which aspect? Why? Clinical differences in what area? In expenditure, health budget, right? We talk about patient leave, stay in hospital, of course, cost money, not from their themselves, but also from government or private uh, Medicare, right? Whatever. And uh, also related to cost effective treatments, a number of treatments. Right. Traditional surgical operation. Right. Have you calculated or you know each operation costs about how much? Right. Sometimes we don't. We're not involved, so we don't worry about it. Once your family involved, and then you know. Right. And also, this related to a huge research fund. Research fund in terms of uh, invention of uh, treatment method technologies. Have you heard about uh, robotic uh, operation? Right? It's not uh, by surgeons physically doing. This is controlled by surgeons using robotic operation, right? Actually, early started from prostate cancer operation, and then developed into head and neck, right? I attended a conference in Melbourne in July, July right? And uh, one of the uh, head and neck surgeons invited was uh, from USA, right? He showed robotic how good. And then one ENT surgeon was very intrigued from Adelaide. She asked, how much it would be? It's not cheap. So that's a related cost effective treatment. Of course, the state of art of a combination of a surgery, um, chemical, what a, uh, a chemotherapy and uh, the uh, radiotherapy. It's not cheap, right? How about uh, the differences? The differences in cure rate between early and the later stages, right? Of course, you can image if early, easy, right? Early means a tiny, small, easy cut. Cut, never. Recur, only small scalp, right? Patient can survive forever. I will give you a uh, actual the um, uh, actual um, case from myself, right? And also related in the quality of life. I show you what the quality of life looks like. Right. For example, early signs of our cancer in town. Most uh, common side in the posterior lateral surface of town. So you can see here where. Can you recognize? Here, in the middle. Right. So 
you will find that in a patient at a very early stage, just a surgical remove in that side, right? Of course, at least uh, 0.5 millimeter in the adjacent normal tissue need to remove as well, right? So you don't need to worry about uh, the half tongue, half size of the tongue, or even the whole tongue. If uh, already at the late state, very big, right? So you have to, you want to save patient life as a priority, save life, not to save the quality of life, right? So why? That's a priority, right? And uh, some cancer, you know, the uh, displacement of uh, oral mucosa trans transformation into oral cancer. For example, in here, that's an obsidy white lesion, right? White patches. And uh, here, obsidy, the early stage of uh, squamous cell carcinoma, right? You can see this uh, over growth, outer growth, looks like uh, the cauliflower. That's the nature of cancer in growth specimen, right? And same to here, right? This is a white lesion. We're not sure, but at least absolutely squamous cell carcinoma. And uh, also some sites in the oral cavity is difficult to find if you're not intensively exam, right? Particularly in the tonsil region, right? It's difficult to find. And uh, most of right? made these cases quite often. So you should have uh, the knowledge to differentiate in your mind differential diagnosis. That's why when I taught to my student, I always give them the differential diagnosis consent, right? So you shouldn't get a mistake, right? So, pyogenic granuloma in periodontitis is quite often. Yeah. Sometimes it's difficult to find the primary cancer in oral cavity or in other side of body. However, early signs sometimes in the lymph node in neck area. Right. So when you pop patient, right, when you exam patient, you should properly exam extra oral cavity or inside oral cavity, right? Particularly in the neck lymph node region. Right. I will tell you a little bit more. But I, this, for these slides, we just talk about the early signs. Sometimes my ties is a lymph node appear first. If uh, this first is early or late, is any, my student here can answer it. I heard, okay. Although you didn't, you know, speak out, I realize you want to say that's already late. It's true, it's already late because my test thesis already occurred, right? It's very poor prognosis progress, right? So you can see this the normal lymph node, right? So this uh, lymphoid, lymphoid 
holy court, right? This is all emphasized, right? And here you can see in the background of lymph node, right? So the structure appeared with the squamous cell carcinoma, right? How do you identify this? Because the tissue structure, because you can see the cartilinized pill, right? With the cartilinized pill, looks like a well differentiated, but it doesn't really matter here, right? Already metastasis, already at the latest stage, right? So this late. And uh, what are we concerning about uh, the delay? Sometimes uh, we can't uh, catch the, the early sign. Right, because of delay, right? We're concerning about the delay for finding early sign of early cancer. Whose fault? Patient delay, right? This is one category. Because the patient, some patient never visit dentist, not regularly, right? So patient missed. And some patients never care about them themselves because of the environmental or lifestyle or not convenient, right? And less or little oral health services provided in certain regions or area, right? Second delay, that's uh, the health professional delay. I won't say you but sometimes missed for any reason. Knowledge or uh, um, uh, focus on tooth problem only, right? So if you could spend extra five or 10 minutes and the problem can be sorted out and no delay at all, as long as the patient visits you, right? If a patient not to visit us, we try to organize dental team to provide the service. So that's a, a concern about delay. And then, not a delay, but how about uh, the accurate of dentist in the clinical diagnosis of oral lesion? Remember here is oral lesion, very broad. It's not only for oral cancer, right, oral lesion. This is based on this. Uh